All right, hey everybody! Welcome to the Provo Kid Podcast. Today we are, uh, I mean, we're we're blessed to have a special guest here, um, Esoteric Eddie. He's an author. He's a researcher. He's uh, he's a lot of things, um, but one of the things he is for me is definitely a hero of mine, a conspiracy hero. He's out there uh, changing the paradigm, and if you go and uh, look at his catalog of work. Um, whether it be his, his actual uh, his book or his podcast um, that he's guests on and his own documentaries on his YouTube, uh, yeah. you're going to find out he's helping uh, a lot of people uh, better understand the world around us. And one of the things that uh, I first learned about was just from, uh, from Esoteric Eddie was the concept of, you know, the devil, Satan, and just understanding that it might not be what I, I grew up believing he was so if you're interested in uh, changing your paradigm i can't help but to uh tell you to go check out esoteric eddie but if there's anything i miss let me introduce him uh the man the myth and he's more than a legend esoteric eddie please uh cover all the bases i missed and uh introduce yourself what up what up uh peace and namaste to everybody um nah man i mean you did a pretty good job you know that's that's pretty much what i do you know for the uh the truth or community um I do a lot of other things outside of that in my life, but yeah, as of right now, just I'm an author, uh, I'm a YouTuber, I make documentaries and videos, and um, I've been, uh, you know, welcome to be a part of this this podcast community. Um, I've been on so many shows in the past seven months, and I've met a lot of cool people such as yourself, and uh, yeah, just hoping to keep that going. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. And um, unlike, I would say, a lot of other podcasts that I've enjoyed listening to you on this podcast of mine is a bit different if people listen to this podcast they know um excuse me i usually rant to myself for an hour so to have the opportunity to talk to someone else is usually a relief for me because uh i'm just usually just chatting to myself um but you have things to share um can you tell us a little bit about uh the book you've written and uh the title of that book and where people can find it Yeah, yeah. So I just released uh, a book by the name of The Lucifer Mystery Revealed. Well, I dropped it in December of 2021. And it's basically an academic perspective on the historicity of Lucifer within the church and the occult. So I kind of just show, you know, the reader how the idea of Lucifer came to be to begin with and, and what led up to that concept and then how it progressed to where it is today and uh it took me about two years to write um and uh i started writing it when i was about 25 and i released it right around 27 or when, when i was 27 years old but uh yes it's been a it's been a cool journey man since i've released it last december wow last december that's uh and are you re-releasing it again um is the second edition coming out no uh not yet at least okay no um awesome and where can we find that amazon yeah yeah so uh it's on amazon the lucifer mystery revealed under my government name eduardo fidencio cano um or you can dm me on instagram at esoteric eddie and i can send you a paperback signed copy However, I would suggest getting the Amazon copy for now because it's actually the better version. It's got the spine title and the back. My personal copies were the first gen versions that only have the front cover. But if you want to sign, you know, first gen, you know, hit me up. Or you can also go to esotericeddy.com where I have other merch and cool stuff on there too. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. And to me and anybody who kind of knows about the LDS culture or, uh, or anything in Utah, um, we kind of grew up with this idea of uh, the devil or Satan or um, I guess this guy who tells you to be mischievous. So uh, when I heard you bring him up, I was like, man, I got to know more. So if anybody uh, who listens to this podcast and uh, I mean, if you're a fan of the religion and you want to know more about this dude, people keep talking about um, 
I mean, at, you, you've done your research and I'm, uh, I'm astonished. And one of the things I've been most impressed about, impressed about was uh, your, your, your deep dive into the actual language of, uh, and I think that's where everything starts, language, right? Like where uh, the, the definitions come from, uh, what, what is the Latin root? And so that, uh, that's really what kind of uh, made me excited to listen to all your podcasts. I'm a big fan of language. And that is really kind of how you understand the world around you is by looking at uh, the words. And um, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Um, but aside from that, um, can you tell me about a little bit about your documentaries on YouTube? Yeah, man. So uh, I, I dropped the channel, my YouTube channel, just around the same time that I did the book. And uh, it's called Esoteric Eddy TV. And all, all of my recent work has kind of been under the brand Esoteric Eddy. Uh, which I started right around last December. But for years prior to that, I mean, I, I went through so many different renditions as an artist, different incarnations as an artist. But this whole esoteric Eddie thing that I've, I've been, uh, you know, uh, pushing and, and, and unfolding with has been the most successful by far. But the YouTube channel, um, it's got about a little over 20 videos, I think. And uh, yeah, it's just got a lot of documentaries on there, full length documentaries, also like some rant type videos and, and what I call esoteric spotlights, which are kind of more laid back videos about certain specific subjects. And um, I have two interviews on there that I did. I'm not much of a podcaster. I don't really uh, focus on interviewing people, but um, every now and then I'm intrigued to, to interview, you know, some people that I grew up listening to or, or something like that. Certainly. And uh, I love that because. The, when I when I saw some of your YouTube videos, it reminded me of the History Channel uh, when it really was the History Channel. Right now, it's just kind of the same show, uh, Ancient Aliens, but it used to be like documentaries about different time periods or different episodes. But yeah, if you go to Esoteric Eddie's YouTube, you can really just go down some rabbit holes and uh, learn some pretty uh, heavy things that uh, I think – they're they're available to most people, but it's it's hidden. It's uh, it's a cult, uh, as you would say, and you've done a great job, kind of uh, bringing it to light and helping everybody kind of see it for what it is. So uh, I can't thank you enough. Um, it is a real treat for me uh, personally when you know I, I get to uh, learn from people like you or I. I there's this hunger. Uh, you, people. Uh, when I uh, there's there's very few people who I think are, are kind of like you, esoteric Eddie, uh, someone like you, I'd call you yearn to learn. You're just hungry, right? Like, unsatiable, yeah. and uh, it's kind of dangerous to be honest. If you're in the government, like if, when people look at people like you, they're like, oh shit, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this guy, this guy will fucking you. You like to learn, and uh, people yeah. like you are very uh, valuable to me because uh, you go down places I might not have the time to go down and or the ability to go down to understand some of these uh really i mean it's on the face of it it can seem simple but nuanced topics like this just the word satan in itself people have these very general concepts but like you you dig into the word the meaning the history like it's a lot um it's a lot to go down it ain't a simple road um, so I've just, I'm very impressed with, uh, everything you've done and I, I can't re recommend, uh, uh, your work, uh, more than, uh, I already have. And you've also been on one of my favorite podcasts, tinfoil hat, um, a recent podcast, red pill cartel I've, uh, been on and you've been all over the place. Are there any other, uh, podcasts you'd like to shout out you've been on or uh, a couple, or is there any place you'd like to give a shout out to? Yeah, man. Well, uh, on my Instagram recently, I think it was uh, like last week or something, I did like a compilation video where I kind of compressed uh, like the first 30 or so shows that I've been on and, and did some little clips and I, I did a shout out to all of them. And the point of the post was to try to get everybody to tag Joe Rogan in it, ah. you know, so that hopefully he could see, you know, like you know, who I am and, and what, what impact I've had on the community and maybe get interested in having me on. But man, I mean, just shout out to everybody, dude. Like, um, you know, so many I've met so many awesome people, and and I really didn't even think that I was gonna become a part of this podcast 
podcast community. But uh, I, I, there's so many people to name. I mean, I was on Tinfoil Hat, like you mentioned, which was 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 which was a real personal goal for me because I, I mean, I grew up listening to those guys since like 2014 ish. You know, when I used to be like an Amazon worker, just out there delivering packages, listening to them. You know, it was always a fun time listening to them. So to be on the show, that was really surreal. And uh, I was also recently on um, Leak Project. Okay. With, yeah. With Rex Bear. He's huge too. I mean, he's grown to new heights himself. And again, I, I grew up listening to him back in like 2014, 2015. So to be on his show now, um, quite regularly, actually, he, he he offered me to be like a regular guest on his show because how, how impactful our first show was together. Wow. So that was, yeah, so that was surreal as well. That's cool, man. But uh but yeah, man, I mean, if I were to shout out anybody, I mean, everybody's done a great job. Everybody's doing a great job of you know, spreading the truth. But if I were to shout out anybody, it would have to be uh, the first podcast I ever went on, which was um, Soulful okay. with Lanice. And Lanice, uh, Lanice yeah, she's actually, um, she's uh, my cousin's lover. <laughs> and I okay. say it that way because they've had a interesting relationship you know um not, not to get into their business but they definitely love each other and they've loved each other for a very long time they've been together for a very long time on and off but my cousin she's what she was starting a podcast and um a spiritual podcast because she was going through some spiritual stuff in her life for the first time she was having this in a, a spiritual awakening and so she wanted to start a podcast and then um her you know her, her guy at the time my cousin reached out to me and was like Hey, and this was before the book dropped too. This was before Esoteric Eddie TV. This was before the Lucifer book. And she basically through my cousin reached out to me and we sat down we, and we did my first podcast ever. And uh, I think I was like her second or third guest. And uh, man, I didn't, from that point forward, I had no idea what was going to open up for me. Wow. So shout out to her and, and everybody else that's had me on. That's a beautiful story. I'm going to have to go back and check that out. Now that uh, you shared that with me, I'm uh pretty excited because it's fun to go back and to see the genesis sometimes and now that i have that uh this is going to be a fun night for me and uh maybe a fun day to to go see that growth but uh man thank you for sharing that and um before i get started is there what's your what's your story like because most people don't i mean they don't fall into the topic of esoteric occultics uh, i mean it's just not normal i would say to kind of be interested in these topics so was there uh, a domino that fell for you at some point in your life where you're like, oh, this is it, I'm interested in this topic? Or how did it come to be where uh, you were one of the, the first people on a podcast where like, hey, I need someone spiritual to talk to uh, and uh, someone I can look to? How'd you, how'd you become this guy uh, you are now? Man, it's, it's, uh, it's been a long journey. And I say this frequently because it's it's just the most simple way I can put it is my entire life has revolved around the esoteric. And that's probably an understatement. Like on a spiritual level, I was probably put here specifically for that. I mean, some of my earliest memories revolve around the esoteric. They revolve around these these key moments where I was shown something that had some kind of occultic meaning. Um, for example, and I was just thinking about this the other day, um, there is one story that I frequently tell on podcasts that I attribute to being the first instance in my life where I was led onto this path. And I'll tell you that story in a bit. But even before then, I think the earliest core memory I have um, about realizing that there was more to this life was when I was dropped off at a at a daycare at, at our church. Wow. Um, I grew I grew up Catholic and Christian. My mom's side was Christian. My dad's side was Catholic. So sometimes we'd bounce around from from church to church. But when I was really young, like in my toddler years, we primarily went to Catholic church. And I remember being about four or five. I'm, and I know I was about that young because I'm for certain this was before first grade for sure okay. but anyways i was about four or five and i remember my mom took me to the daycare center at the church and and she's like okay you know go play or whatever and and, and uh I, I was there by myself my other my siblings weren't there with me so i was already feeling kind of like isolated and weird being by myself 
I was an introverted kid, you know, all throughout my life. But I remember being in the daycare and then turning around and, and just kind of the noise of all the kids and everything. And then, but on the wall, there's just this huge portrait. It probably seemed huge because I was very little, but it, there was this huge portrait of Jesus just like staring over all of us. And, but like, you know, ominously. Yeah. And I, it, I just remember looking at that painting and just thinking like who is that who is this guy? you know yeah. he's important yeah yeah like who is that and and it just something inside me just like connected with it and i just knew there was something more behind that painting and little did i know there was a whole lot more behind that painting wow. but uh that's a beautiful i mean i had to cut you off but that's a beautiful answer because it's a it really is a child's question you know what I mean? That uh, took you to where you are. And that's, it's a childhood's passion to, that allows you to keep doing this research. And it, it really, it makes, it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, Cause yeah, I, I mean, some of the things that drive me are some of the questions I had as a kid as well. Like, who is this guy? Why is he uh, so important? And like you, I had some of these questions about Jesus and fortunate for me, um, I, uh, I've been allowed to answer those questions myself a little bit rather than have been told. So I like Jesus. You can see him in the background um, yeah. for me. Um, and to me, he's just uh, a person of light and resonance. And uh, it's to a lot of other people, he's a lot of other things. And to Satan, well, one of your uh, topics of research, that's a, that's a lot of things to a lot of people. And uh, through your own research, uh, which started with you looking at a picture all the way to, I mean, it's funny, Jesus to writing a book about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Right. <laughs> so much has changed. Yeah. But I um, mean, that, so that was like the first core memory. And, but the actual first instance where I was actually shown something was in first grade okay. and uh, I'll make it kind of short, but uh, basically I was reading a book about dinosaurs and dragons and somewhere in that book, the author mentioned knights and how, you know, knights fought dragons and stuff like that. And, but there was also a short section about the Holy Grail and how these knights were after the Holy Grail and stuff. And I still remember the picture to this day. Uh, there was just like a cave with treasures. And in the middle of the treasure, there was just this golden cup and it was supposed to be, you know, a, a representation of the Holy Grail. And I thought that that's what it was, just a gold expensive cup. But little did I know, again, that, you know, it was an allegory towards a much, much deeper occult tale. And that memory and that story stuck in my mind. It was ingrained in me. And so, as you mentioned earlier, these these the domino effect took place early on and just every year of my life something was just kept me on this path some instance some experience just kept me going and i can tell you just endless stories endless examples of this but all throughout my life it's everything's been leading up to this moment and to whatever the next one's going to be and when you tell me your story i kind of see it like uh a light i'm a grateful dead fan i wasn't a grateful dead fan in fact, till I took psilocybin mushrooms, which is a weird story, to be honest, because I had uh, I've been to a Grateful Dead concert when I was a child, grew up listening to it, didn't like it at all. And then I uh, took mushrooms and then every song after that started to hit. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and so then yeah. I, I started thinking about the lightning bolt, the chain. And so uh, what you kind of described to me was like a chain of synchronicities that just hasn't stopped. It's just been one lightning bolt your whole life uh, leading you. And it, I mean, obviously there's free will, um, but sometimes you can definitely see destiny in, in the path of some people. And it's, it's, it's awesome to see personally. And uh, it's a beautiful story that uh, you're, you're kind of sharing with everybody. And it's shocking. You started, what, December of last year? Yeah, officially with Esoteric Eddie. Man, that's wild. It's been a it's been a fast year for you, my friend. Do you practice manifestation, or is this just like uh, how how's this working out for you? Are you setting goals? Or are you just um, doing what you enjoy, and these are the fruits of your enjoyment? Uh, kind of a little bit of all of that. Uh, I do practice manifestation. 
it's not a huge a part of, of my success um, process, but I, I do practice it and I have used it in the past for other things. Um, it kind of, everything kind of starts with, with the passion, right? With, yeah. with the dream. I've always been a dreamer. I mean, since I was a kid, I've always dreamt about the future. It's one of my favorite things to do when I'm, when I'm just chilling or, you know, driving or whatever, when I'm zoning out, when I'm in that zoning out period, it's one of my favorite, it's always been one of my favorite things to do is to dream and, and of what I could do with myself, what, what I could do with my talents and where I can take life. Mine too. And yeah, so it starts with that. It always started with that. And, um, like I kind of mentioned before, I, I've been on this path of, as an artist for over a decade. Um, I've I've had different incarnations as an artist. Like for example, I've spent I spent ten years um, pursuing a hip hop career, okay, a local hip hop career, and that played a huge part in what Esoteric Eddie would become because I learned a lot about how to interact with communities, how to self promote, how to um, you know, graphic design and, and, and all those kind of things and how to use your voice and be confident. I mean, I've rapped, I've rapped on huge, on stages in front of huge audiences before, like hundreds of people. Yeah. So yeah. And that, that's a whole nother thing. That's a whole nother lifetime that I lived. Game you're playing too though, which is also you know, an expertise you've, you've found yourself in again is language. Yeah, and all and all my music that I made too centered around the same subjects, esoteric stuff and, and all that. But um as as of right now, over all the years of just as just being a man, you know, just being a person, out of all the things I learned, I, I finally hammered out certain processes for my individual success, you know, how uh, how it is I'm gonna go about things. And as of right now, it starts with the with the with the imagination, you know, sitting back imagining, okay specifically what is it that i want you know like what is it where is it that i'm trying to go in life and then i get to the the pen and paper process of actually writing it down you know and i don't mean like a vision board like you know not that type of writing it down and those are cool you know i one of my friends put me onto that early on back in the day but i mean actually writing down what i'm going to do to get there God, for that's example so, that's so important by the way i mean people yeah i mean i hate to cut you off but what you're speaking to it's it shouldn't be just talked over what i mean the the secret you're sharing is i mean keep going man you need pen and paper uh to do a lot of things in life if you're going to build a building there's no chance in hell you're going to do it without pen and paper so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, it's anything whether it's a physical building or like uh personal goals in your life, uh, what you're talking about rings true in so many ways, but keep going about that. Absolutely. Yeah. One of my personal mottos is, or philosophies is you can only build a castle brick by brick, you know, step by step. So like, for example, as of right now, what I do today is, um, I actually sit down at the end of every month and I write out what I'm going to do every single day of the next month. And for example, it was like, you know, on Monday, the 23rd or whatever, it might say, uh, spend two hours on, on current book, spend three hours on YouTube documentary. So I actually, by to the day, I write down what I'm going to do that entire month. Can I and tap I in? Just, Can I tap in? Go ahead. Sorry, bro. You're the guest. I'm like taking over the conversation. I feel like no, seeing no, Tripoli. <laughs> <laughs> let the man talk but uh so i have had this personal question in my life is are you living life or just remembering it so everything i just said now just became a memory and we're remembering the memory but what you're talking about is you're remembering your future you're writing it down and you're waiting to get there and that is one of the i mean i actually believe i'm remembering my life right i'm not in the the belief of living it and I'm just remembering how great it is. And I'm remembering my future and all the things I, I want to do. And uh, it sounds like you are on that same path where you're writing down your future. And in almost some sense, you're remembering what you're going to do in a month. Yeah, man. I, I've vibed with that same similar thought before, you know, if to get deep 
with it or spiritual with it. I vibe with that before, man. Like, like I'm just unfolding what's already there, you know, but at the same time, I also believe in the idea of timelines. You know, it's we can easily slip into other timelines. And that's why it's so crucial for me personally to stay hammered on a routine so that I'm I'm without a doubt wow. staying on the timeline that I want to be on. Jesus, bro. Yes, yes, man. That's so beautiful. You're right. And people people are talking about CERN and different timelines, but you don't really need to worry about CERN when we're, me and you are having the conversation we're having right now. It's it's like we are our own CERN if we're not taking things uh, in the right direction with our goals and uh, our future and the journey we're on. And so, like, man, that's beautiful. You're right. You can slip in the wrong timeline pretty quickly if you're making the wrong choices. Wow, Eddie. Woo, dude, you're hitting it, brother. <laughs> It just comes natural, man. <laughs> man, that's, that's beautiful. Ah, I love that. So, uh, man, remembering or living life. So you you really do live by a, a couple of things I preach, which is you got to have pen and paper. Uh, you got to have this idea that your your future is something you're looking forward to, you're planning out, and, and in some sense, you anticipate living out. Um, ah, man, it's it's amazing. Are there any other things? Do you practice yoga or what's, or, uh, breathing techniques? Give us some of the, the down low on your, your personal, uh, spiritual practices. Sure. Sure. Um, over the years it's, it's, it's fluctuated. I've always, uh, kept a consistency with some type of, of meditation throughout my life. Never really dive fully into that. I have had people in my life close to me that have, you know, showed me, how deep it can go. Like for example, my, my one of my older brothers, he's always been into meditation, and um, whenever he's around, you know, he he try to he tries to get me out there. We'll, we'll go on a walk and go somewhere in a forest, and and you know we'll meditate together for like five minutes. So, you know, um, and he was also the first person in my life that that showed me how to work out. Okay. Um, you know, so it's my spiritual practices have fluctuated over my life, but they've always somewhat remained in a, in a similar fashion it's always i do meditate every now and then when i deem it necessary to to go inward um and, and when i when i do that meditation to go inward it's usually because of manifestation it's usually because there's something going on in in my life or or in the wider world where i feel it necessary to go inward and and try to like output positive energy to sustain that but um how about prayer? or prayer yeah and prayer has always been a been a part of my life because of my my family my parents my grandparents the religious part of my life yeah. i learned how to pray early on and then later i coupled prayer with manifestation and meditation and, and kind of realized they're all kind of the same thing so yes. i still you get it yeah, yeah, it's it's all energy and vibration. Can you work. speak it's more a, to the fact that it is the same thing? All the things that prayer, manifestation, or just language in itself is like it is one big prayer, right? Yeah, absolutely. You're so, constantly I praying, mean, almost. Yeah, so like the idea of Om, for example, right? Like the 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 Om chant um, to the Hindus in in the Rig Vedas, in the Vedas, the frequency of the universe it's literally what is sustaining all of reality you know it's what scientists might call like the god particle or something it's it's this this underlying frequency that is sustaining everything and so when you chant om what you're doing is harmonizing yourself with that underlying frequency and so you're living harmoniously with it and you know so you when, hit it when you get chills like that's like i i'm like i'm trying to think like how do they know they're correct and i'm thinking they don't have a computer so how do they figure out their rights like oh for me it's chills or there's some sensory in their body when they're doing ohm and they're hitting this frequency that's telling them this is right this is correct because i've i've done ohm and i've done chance and uh when i've done it for a, a sustained period and i'm talking you know for for hours perhaps it is chills there is some sensory acknowledgement of that that is i mean it's uplifting to say the least yeah man so i mean when we realize that it's all vibration, right? This, the, the source 
is vibration um, or at least that that's the energy that it's outputting to us and then when we realize as you say language is all it is is vibration too it's just it's just vibration with a uh an image attached to it which we call communication um so that when we're praying and when we're speaking with intention we're meditating where we're chanting om we are we are releasing or we're trying to connect and, and communicate or transfer what we actually are, want out of this life so it's all really the same thing and that's why nowadays when i pray i really i simplify it for myself when i pray or i meditate or i chant or i set a, a manifestation intention um i either i'm either doing one of three things i'm either one just giving thanks and praise just saying thank you for all of this uh or two i'm i'm really i'm putting positive energy out there and and i guess humbly asking the creator to to help this world to help the people in need and the third thing which is the more you know i guess selfish thing is is sometimes i'll sit there and, and it's it's selfish in spiritual terms but but in other ways it's um it's active work it's active work. So the third thing that I use this meditative prayer power for is the active work of trying to manifest my personal goals. Extend God's work. You could say in short. Right? Yeah. Because uh, if you don't do God's work, who, who will? So you do gratitude first. Then you say, God help the world. And then you say, uh, God help me do your work. Yeah. That's that a right? beautiful way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah. Because... Yeah, because if you don't do God's work, who will? That's a beautiful way of putting it. And and I say selfish because I'm just I'm just being honest, you know what I mean? Because some people out there might try and manifest a new car, you know, you know, but but to some to some people, you know, a new car could mean getting to work, which means feeding their family, which means, you know, creating happiness and abundance in life. You know, I've never used manifestation for things that I didn't you know, really need on, on a civilian level. Yes. For example, this one time I was, I was, I was homeless. I was actually homeless living in my car. And so I used manifestation to get me into a better place. And it wasn't like, yo, I want to live in a mansion. It was like, just give me somewhere above a car. And, wow. and I did, I got to a mobile home, which is literally a step above a car. And then That's I good. got to, uh, this was beautiful cabin on a lake and then from there my life just went further and further wow man that's uh that's uh man that could be a podcast episode in itself how you just did all those steps that's <laughs> you that's that's crazy man that little story you just breezed over man ah that's so beautiful and those techniques that uh you shared i've implemented in my life and i've heard other people talk about and uh Sometimes people confuse it with the law of attraction, but they forget that most of the time uh, when people do a prayer, they wake up and they're going to work. Like there's always action coupled with uh, the laws of manifestation. And uh, it really is, uh, it to me, it's, it is all work. And sometimes people because what you talked about was manifestation, but every step of the way you were doing the work. And that's one of the best parts I think about manifesting or creating your world is when you do it right, you get the rewards. You get to own uh, the fact that you had all those accomplishments. You took all those steps. You had all those victories, right? And that's what work gives you. And uh, man, it is manifestation, but it's coupled with uh, absolutely hard work and uh, definitely busting your ass. <laughs> no yeah. doubt about it, brother. Um, that's yeah. so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, that's absolutely. amazing. Uh, so, I mean, we're, we're at the halfway mark here. And uh, is there anything you like to uh, just re-plug re or rebrand or anything you thought you'd like to bring back into the conversation? Um, well, uh, just going to be releasing a documentary this weekend that I'm super hyped about. It's about uh, Toth, the Hermetica and the Emerald Tablets of Toth. 
So it's, it's going to go deep, man. This is a subject that I've been fascinated with since, you know, the beginning of my, of my journey. So to finally wrap it up and give it my conclusion is going to be, it's going to be awesome. So just before I ask you to maybe talk a little bit more about this, Thoth is my favorite God because he's associated with the, the creation of language. And I think language is the first invention or like people, I don't give a fuck about numbers, math. The first thing that changed the world was language and Thoth is a God associated with that. And he's associated with Hermes and this idea of, um, man, I hate to hijack this, but my simple understanding in some way is that um, God is so magnificent that he can't communicate to us. It would just blow our minds, right? So so he has these inter, uh, intermissionary, what are, what's the term? He has these uh, like emissaries, emissaries, right? And uh, Thoth is one of them and he's the language. So like, because God can't, he'd blow our minds if you talk to us. He sends Thoth down. <laughs> Yeah, or Hermes, yeah. right? So um, that's what your consciousness is sometimes, or th these thoughts you have in your head. It is thought, it is Hermes, because it's quick. It's just boom. It's really there. It's intuition. And it's just like Mercury or the planet. It comes around, and it's not always there, and then boom, it is. And yeah. you can't say it's God, because that'd be crazy, right? Um, yeah. but I love the topic itself cause it has to do with language and, uh, thought in general and the history of Egypt and just the fact that I think he's a cool looking God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, man. I mean, he's fascinating. So can you tell me, I mean, I don't want, I want people to go obviously watch this, this, uh, documentary you're going to put out, but can you give us a little sneak peek or tell us a little bit yeah, more about yeah. it? Yeah, absolutely, man. It, it, well, it's taken me, I guess, like about three weeks of on and off research and writing to put it together. Still putting the finishing touches on the actual video. But uh, yeah, man, it, it, I, it goes through who Toth is and, and who he was. And then it kind of goes into um, his connection to the Hermetica and then also to his connection with, with Hermes Trismegistus, early Islam, and then eventually the Emerald Tablets of Toth the Atlantean. And so what I found, right, because in the truther community, you know, the wider community, as it's called, we, as you said, we, we see Toth and Hermes as the same person, right? Hermes Trismegistus. Yeah. But the tradition goes deeper than that, as I found. It's like even in Islam, you know, they have respect for Hermes Trismegistus. At least in early Islam, they had her respect for him. And there's a prophet in the Quran known as Idris, who um, is likened to Enoch. Wow. So in the Quran, yeah, a lot of people might not know this, but the Quran actually has a lot of respect and similarities uh, towards Judaism and Christianity. That's fascinating. Yeah, I mean, and Jesus is... is quoted you know i think like hundreds of times in the quran and that islam is is respected as as an abrahamic faith meaning that there there are three abrahamic faiths there's judaism christianity and islam mm -hmm. and it's, they're known as abrahamic faiths because they all claim that the beginning of their their faith started with abraham they all respect abraham as a historical figure but nonetheless in the quran there's a prophet named idris who they who the early who early Islamic mystics coupled with Enoch. And some of them also said that Idris and Enoch were Hermes. They were, they were Hermes Trismegistus. And uh, the Hermes Trismegistus and Enoch being um, Toth, it was kind of loosely put together over hundreds of years. Yes. So in the documentary, I kind of show you how and that happened you know how we got from the egyptian toft from you know thousands of years ago to this now mystical archetype where he's blended in with enoch and idris and hermes wow that that's beautiful and it makes sense because that's what time does it turns it into almost a monet like painting right where it almost becomes blurry you can't quite tell where one thing starts or begins but if you look at it long enough uh, it becomes clear and you do start to see uh, kind of a, a good storyline, which is what you've found, right? Like uh, there's a lot of connections and it is amazing when you think about uh, how 
if you look at something long enough, you start to dig up more and more information. And uh, how do you, when you make these documentaries, how do you decide like, oh, that's enough time? Um, I, because it seems like, uh, and I have another question too. As far as the Emerald Tablets are concerned, what's your source? How did what, what what source did you go to to find or read the Emerald Tablets? Sure, sure. So uh, as far as like deciding the time in the documentary, you mean like the length of the actual video? No, I mean uh, as far as like researching the subject. So you could research Thoth or or and the history of it for quite a quite a long time when do you when did you decide or do you have a timeline for how long you research these topics um mm, okay because you, it's uh it seems like something you you might always just find another rabbit hole or you might create a series about um when did you decide this is uh, a good time to time stamp it and submit it okay yeah well before i started esoteric eddie you know tv and um, you know, the mission that I'm on now, I had spent about 15 years of my life researching the wider, you know, subject of all these things, of all esoteric and conspiratorial things. So these 15 years prepared me to do the work that I'm doing now. Yes, so that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I kind of already had a lot of a good understanding, a good foundational understanding as to who Toth was and all these different connections. And um, now that I'm doing Esoteric Eddie TV, you know, it's it's my responsibility to come up with ideas to, to drop, you know, every every month. When I first started out, I was only doing one video a month and then okay. things started to really take off. And I was like, well, maybe I should pay more attention to this. So now I'm trying to drop three videos a month, you know, not all documentaries, maybe one documentary a month and then two like smaller type videos. But um the Toth one was, it only became an idea like about a month ago. I was thinking, well, what am I going to do for July? And uh, and I was like, for some reason, I was just like, let me, let me just do Toth, you know? That's perfect I think, to me. Yeah, and I think really what I was trying to do was I was trying to get the bigger um, ideas that I've, that, I've, that I've revolved around this, this work out of the way first. You know, like I wanted to get some of the ideas that I was passionate about out of the way first. And Toth was a huge one. So I was like, I got to I got to do it at some point. Right. I was like, I have to do it at some point. So it kind of just fell out, fell that way. It was just like, well, let's just do it now. So I decided to do it about a month ago. And um, I'm relentless when it comes to like routines and schedules. And what's taught me to be that way is, is a couple of different things. But one of them for sure is working out. Um, I forgot to mention this earlier when you asked about my spiritual practices. As silly as it might be, working out is actually like my main spiritual practice Ooh. right now. I think that you can speak more to that, of how keeping your body in uh, a respectable shape pays off now, but also in the future. Like it, it's paying taxes yeah. towards yourself. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, there's so many benefits to working out. I mean, and, and a lot comes with that lifestyle. You know, your eating habit changes because you have to maintain a certain eating habit. You know, if my eating got better. I drank a lot more water because you need to stay hydrated, you know. So a lot comes with a working out routine and it teaches me relentless routine, you know. And no matter how I feel, no matter how my day's been, you know, I have to hit that routine. And it goes back to that thing that you said about you know, manifesting our future or unfolding the future that we already know. Because one time I was on shrooms um, with the homie at the beach and we we're oh, yeah. at the shore at night. It's a huge, excuse me, there was a huge full moon and I'm sitting there meditating on the mushroom mm, in front of this huge great. full moon. And I saw my higher self or at least what could be my higher self. And it was just like, as silly as it may sound, it was just this it's like buff like mystical dude and that was my higher self I me mean, it was literally my higher self he, he was just like stronger than me smarter than me more mystical than me just, just looking a, down at me like uh just a badass almost a, yeah man no i know exactly what you mean um i feel like it's your ideal self right yeah and we're always working yeah. towards that where i'm in an imperfection <laughs> <laughs> yeah man so um so with all that, man, I'm relentless about routine and stick and, and committing to what I say I'm going to do. So when I decided, all right, I'm going to do Toth in July, 
Uh, and also after all these years, I've developed very good um, studying habits. So I can move through sources really fast. I don't need to read an entire book or an entire, you know, 300 page PDF from, from the 1800s. I, you know, which I do a lot. I, I read th things from the 16, 17, 1800s a lot. But um, so all these habits and ethics that I've learned help me move through things fast. So I, I don't necessarily put a timeline on the research aspect um, necessarily, but I kind of do. So what I say is like, all right, these two weeks and on these specific days, on these specific hours, I'm going to research. And then after these two weeks, I should be, according to my, my belief in myself, be done with that part of it. And Perfect. after those two weeks, then this week, I'm going to spend on these specific days, on these specific hours, um, writing up the script for the documentary. And then from there, it's recording the script and then spending time to put video and images to the script. And before I know it, after about a month, I got a full length one hour documentary done. Yeah, that, to me, that's so organized. That's so detailed. It's, I mean, I'm absolutely impressed because my main goal is sometimes I get stuck in stages where I, I never publish because I'm like, you can always do more. And I forget finished is better than perfect. And what you outlined for me is just methodical. Uh, you understand exactly what you want, uh, timelines and the reality that, yeah, you should at some point be uh, knowledgeable and be done. And I, I, I understand this a lot because my wife was in law school and she'd study for a test and she I'd say you didn't study for the test in the past two days. You've been in law school for three years. Right. And you were uh, you worked in a law office for two or whatever before that. Like you've been studying for five years. And what you told me is exactly true. Like it wasn't just I mean, I decided to think about Thoth for two weeks. It's been 10 years, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just thought i'd drop a video you know what i mean uh, it's exactly. so it's so beautiful to to hear someone uh, i mean how did i like did you how'd you get this skill set where did you go like where did you acquire this ability to do stuff like this because to me uh, i mean you might see obviously you could be self-taught but how it's i'm astonished by uh honestly uh your mindset and how you do this this is it's just beautiful thanks man thanks uh, i've always been a writer i've always been a reader uh the first time i realized i had a skill and passion for writing was in fourth grade when i won um, a contest for the the best fictional story I wrote this funny like sci-fi thing and then everybody loved it. And then I got to read it in front of the class and every, it was cool. And that at that moment I realized like, Hey, I got something here. Pivotal. So I kept that developing. And even in, in middle school, I read, I wrote like hand wrote in composition books, like three full length, like fictional books that I never did anything with, but I would like to cycle back to eventually. Um, so I've always had this skill for writing and being imaginative, but then the, I was never a good student though. <laughs> never. I was, I was very rebellious all my entire school career. Figure, rebellious man. guy. <laughs> you know, you, and you rebellious. No way, man. The guy writes a book about, about saying, yeah. <laughs> no kind way. of funny, huh? That's so beautiful. Uh, sorry to cut you off, man. No, 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 it's all good. But, and it's funny though, because being a bad student taught me how to, study very quickly because when test day came right i had to move through material really fast so i learned how to like pick things out like literally train my eyes how to move through pages and see key words the only the key words that i needed to see so i kind of over the years developed being able to move through material really fast but more importantly uh, uh, a tool that I use that a lot of people do not use that is right in front of our faces a lot is the index part of books. Wow. Yeah. yeah. T speak more about that. Yeah. So whenever I get a book, I like this one time, um, I, I blew this chick's mind away one time. She, she had this book and she's like, Oh, I've been 
wanted to read this book for like months. It's just sitting there. And I was like, oh, let me check it out. It was like this astrolog astrological book or something. And like I always do when I get books is I usually go to the index page and I just go straight to it. Like, let me just go to T, go to Toth. Oh, cool. Toth on pages, this, this and that. And I just go directly to those pages. Bam, just paragraph after paragraph about Toth, exactly what I wanted to know. And I just started reciting this stuff to her. And she's just like, what? Like, that's in there? I'm like, yeah, dude, just go to the index page. It shows you exactly what pages this knowledge is on. Wow, that's, that's beautiful. Uh, and there, there really is a skill to understanding books. And sometimes I think uh, it's, it's not necessarily given to everybody, but it is uh it is valuable even the, the 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 very beginning of the the book what's that called again the uh like the forward table of contents oh uh, yeah oh yeah i love well, that part too knowing yeah. what chapters and when i think about your your youtube and you told me about like how you're publishing things it seems to me like you're just doing chapter after chapter like your youtube channel and your documentaries could almost be a, a audio visual book so to speak you could uh, condense yeah. it into a book in itself. But yeah, yeah. No, I well, because all my documentaries start off as a script. I actually, I spend a good week of okay. writing the script, and then I, I record the script verbatim. So I actually do do chapters. Um, you know, so it'd be like like in the documentary I'm about to drop this this weekend. The first chapter is is just Toth and the Book of Toth, so it just centers around that kind of just warming you up. And then the second chapter goes deeper, and then deeper and deeper. Mm. Man, you do have a beautiful mind. So, uh, when you when you look at all these things that you've created, do you have a favorite subject? Because some of them, it seems like all of them are, I mean, interesting in themselves. It'd be kind of difficult to pick one. Like, you know about Eliphas Levi. You know about Thoth. Like, there's a lot of people you know about. Not a, a lot of subjects, but is there something you personally like the most, or you've enjoyed the most at least researching? Yeah. So um, early on in my days, which was like high school, when I like really started going into the stuff heavy, like reading and watching stuff, it was the Anunnaki. You know, I loved that stuff for so many years and I still do. But I'm starting to like finally or I have been actually for the past couple of years, kind of like, um, you know, fading away from that, from that or, or I guess waning away from that topic. Because I've, I've digested everything I can from that, you know, I've, I've read like almost all of Sitchin's books, but um, I mean, I love it all, but time and time again, what gets me most excited for, for whatever reason is the connections of early Judaism with the old world. Okay. There's something there, like it's more of an obsession really, like to this day. And that's kind of what my second book is going to be about that I'm dropping in uh, September of this year. It's uh, I have an obsession almost of like trying to find the clear cut connections between early Judaism and like the Canaanite um, civilizations and religions. Wow, that hunger. That's the kind of thing. I mean, full circle, we're bringing it back to the thing I, I brought up earlier. But you really do have this yearning to learn where insatiable appetite and it, it's beautiful to see. Um, and I, I, I've sh I share the same appetite. I love uh i love learning and it's i'm trying to think of uh have you like what are your some i'm trying to think what are your book because i've watched your youtube your youtube clips your uh i'm thinking of your reels or your uh tiktoks where you show your your library your books and yeah you, you reference your primary sources and uh you, you go to a few of your favorite books. Can you mention any for us? Like, uh, cause I might want to add a few to my, my, my shelf. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, I think my personal, my physical collection is a little over 200. Now I also have a digital PDF library that I've been building up over the years too. Let's do but, um, <laughs> yeah, but just like, I mean, whenever I recommend just some good, um, introductory classics, that helped me on this path or get on this path. Mm -hmm. I always recommend um, for sure, of course, Zechariah Sitchin's 12th Planet, which is his first book. Okay. Um, William Bromley's Gods of Eden. Ooh, I have that one. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Um, Bob Frisell. Bob Frisell's Something in This Book is True. 
Dope, it's man. a it's a cool yeah. Bob Frisell was an early like New Ager author. Um, I believe in like the early '90s. Probably started in the '80s, but '90s for sure. Okay. But it, that book was like one of the first like three or five books that I read back in like late middle school, high school that like set me on this path. So Perfect. Bob Frisell's. Thank you for sharing that. Then. Yeah, yeah. I love some of the the books that change people's lives. You got a couple more, like, I, and then I'll share one or two with you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, just turning around, just like literally looking yeah, at. Yeah, it. Look back. Oh, um, yeah. There's so many, man. There's so many, but just another cool little pocketbook um, is uh, the New World Order by Robert. Uh, Patterson, I believe. Yeah, yeah he okay. he was actually like a Christian minister, but that book is pretty cool, though. I love it, and uh, yeah, you and the reason I like to uh, I'm bringing the we've been here for almost an hour, and I'm bringing the conversation back to books because uh, I'm my first YouTube video uh, was a book review. I'm a big, I mean, not I started my first time really engaging into books was when I was 27 years old. And I started to passionately read books. Um, and so I really appreciate someone like you, Esoteric Eddie. You read books. You um, go to them. And uh, you also read in a, in a way I identify with where people get confused, where they think they have to get a book and read it, where you understand and I understand that sometimes you get a book like, oh, I want to reference that. That's on my book shelf because if i need it it's there it's like almost a sword right it's a rhetorical yeah. sword and sometimes people forget that it's like just because you get a book doesn't mean you have to read it the whole part i, I have some books because of one sentence i'm like i just i just need that sentence <laughs> yeah so, yeah no i mean so, some of the books i get are literally just just to have it on my shelf like as a collectible like yo that that's a must have you got to have that on the shelf uh it, it's beautiful and you are a real reader and I can't recommend reading enough to anybody. So, uh, get, uh, Eddie's book, um, Amazon, you can get it signed from him, uh, get it wherever you can go to his YouTube and I can't thank you enough for sharing your time with me. Uh, it's been a blessing and, um, is there, do one last plug for yourself and anything else you got to say? Um, plugs again, Esoteric Eddie TV on YouTube, uh, Esoteric Eddie on Instagram, EsotericEddie.com for merch. And I got other platforms that I'm not too active on, but you, you'll find them on those other ones if you want to connect there. But uh, anything else? Uh, no, nah, man. I mean, thanks for having me. This was cool. I, I like, you know, the laid back, you know, energy. And uh, yeah, man, just thanks for everybody for tuning in and, and just stay in touch with, with both of us and what we got going on. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, yeah, like, and uh, one of the things I like to do uh, as far as podcast goes, if you want to find more of Esoteric Eddie, go to your uh, podcast platform and just search them and you'll pull up uh, a whole index of a bunch of different podcasts he's been, he's been on and uh, go check them all out. He talks about a, a number of different things as I've found out and man, you are an uh, encyclopedia of information. I can't thank you enough. So God bless you, uh, Esoteric Eddie, and uh, many blessings, my friend. Thank you.